Good morning, everyone. Morning. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that, by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and, by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, thus should one regard us, as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysterious God. Now it is of course required of stewards that they be found trustworthy. It does not concern me in the least that I be judged by you or any human tribunal. I do not even pass judgment on myself. I am not conscious of anything against me. But I do not thereby stand acquitted. The one who judges me is the Lord. Therefore, do not make any judgment before the appointed time until the Lord comes. For he will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will manifest the motives of our hearts. And then everyone will receive praise from God. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. Take delight in the Lord, and he will grant you your heart's requests. The salvation of the just. Commit to the Lord your way. Trust in him, and he will act. He will make justice dawn for you like the light, bright as the noonday shall be your vindication. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right and forsakes not his faithful ones. Criminals are destroyed, and the posterity of the wicked is cut off. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. The salvation of the just is from the Lord, and he is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. The salvation of justice comes from the Lord. Alleluia! 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 I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Alleluia! Alleluia! Disciples of John the Baptist fast often 
and offer prayers. And the disciples of the Pharisees do the same. But yours eat and drink. Jesus answered them, Can you make the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come and when the bridegroom is taken away from them, then they will fast in those days. And he also told them the parable, No one tears a piece from a new cloak to patch an old one. Otherwise he will tear the new and the piece from it will not match the old cloak. Likewise, no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled, and the skins will be ruined. Rather, new wine is poured into fresh wineskins, and no one who has been drinking old wine desires new, for he says, the old is good. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, what really stands out to me today is as I prepare to go home to celebrate the wedding of my nephew tomorrow, um, so the bridegroom, right, stands out to me. And then, unfortunately, really what stands out to me is tearing and bursting. Uh, you see, it's because uh, my family is not uh, immune to the kind of fighting that is happening across our country these days. Political fighting. Political tearing and bursting. So, that's what I have great um, kind of uh, um, struggle, this um, conflict, and looking forward to celebrating the beauty of the sacrament of marriage with my nephew, and his lovely, beautiful, uh, grounded, uh, salt of the earth uh, fiance, soon to be wife. And yet, I have this conflict because I can just hear the past, the, the sending zingers at one another because of the right and the left. And I find myself sitting in the middle going, stop it. Please, stop it. If we are truly people of faith, this is me talking, just, this isn't maybe the Catholic Church talking, but this is me talking. If we are truly people of faith, we can't be over here, we can't be over here. We have to realize that on the right, uh, the, the conservative movement, there is work to be done to be more Christ-like. And over here, on the liberal end of things, there is work to be done to be more Christ-like. The scribes and the Pharisees kept trying to bait Jesus and get at him, and uh, they were not willing to uh, even be open to new wine, to new skins. The old is better. They were hard-hearted and closed. And who are, in my mind, the scribes and the Pharisees, People on both extremes with their hard hearted positions. Anyone 
who does not recognize that there is work to be done on both ends, I believe, have their hearts hardened and they're holding on to their own position. And we will not grow in our, in our relationship with Christ and as a community of the body of Christ without that heart being softened. So, now you know what I have to look forward to this weekend. It'll be everything I can muster to not talk about this tomorrow during the wedding homily. <laughs> Pray for me that I won't, okay? Because it probably wouldn't be fair at all to my nephew and his fiance. Um, but I just really, I'm just really tired of it. And we're still months away from the election. And so I just, uh, I just think that we all need to pray. We all need to examine where we are on that spectrum and how that spectrum is keeping us from Christ. How we are, are affiliating ourselves with political uh, stances and political uh, Parties and platforms. <clears throat> and when we start using our Christianity to close ourselves off from coming closer to the other, we are not listening to the gospel. So let us open up our hearts and our minds to recognizing that Christ is calling us to, to new wineskins, to being open to breathing with the other so that we can truly make our country even greater, that we can continue to grow closer to Christ as a community of faith, but holding on to the ideologies will continue to have a separate and divided. Let us pray. For the church throughout the world, that Christians everywhere will continue to soften their hearts to work at bringing the gospel to life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our Pope Francis, for Archbishop Lucas, for all who hold and teach the Catholic faith, that they can be uh, the, the moral voice in our society today so desperately needed to pulling people together. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all of those families who are torn and burst apart, uh, that healing and love will rule the day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for vocations to the priesthood and religious life and We've been praying now for a few months for Gilbrian, which we've recently learned is Gilbrian, um, just in time for his ordination tomorrow. So uh, we were talking, the community gathered here was talking before Mass that uh, we just finally got it right, right before we stopped praying for him, right? Because uh, these are vocations you know, that are discerning the priesthood that we're calling for. So now that he's going to be ordained tomorrow, he's on his own. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I do hope that you continue to pray for priests as well. Self-serving is that might sound. But let us pray for Gil Bryan, Thomas, Paul, Patrick, Luke, Min, 
Pat, Ryan, Andrew, Trevor, Christian, Jacob, and from vocations from our beloved Sacred Heart Parish, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the intention of this Mass for Elizabeth Fitzsimmons, and for all who have gone before us marked by faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we ask you to hear all the prayers we bring before you with faith and confidence through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, which earth is given in human hands of man. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God. Blessed are you, Lord, of all creation. Through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, the grace of the Lord and His name, for our wonderful and wonderful church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all the saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the house. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on a journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that, by the Spirit, by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. By our partaking of this mystery, Almighty Father, give us life through your Spirit. Grant that we may be conformed to the image of your Son, and confirm us in the bond of communion. Together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Archbishop, with all other bishops, with priests and deacons in your entire people. Grant that all the faithful of the church, looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith, may constantly devote themselves to the service of the gospel. Keep us attentive to the needs of all, that sharing their grief and pain, their joy and hope, we may faithfully bring them the good news of salvation and go forward with them along the way of your kingdom. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There, in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, mighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of the Lord, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, take your hands in the world and mercy us. Lamb of God, you take your hands in the world and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take your hands in the world and mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. <clears throat> Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word.
My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this time receive you sacramentally, please come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you now as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to separate, to be separated from you. Amen. <coughs> Let's pray. <clears throat> Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, <clears throat> that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you, God. Our prayer for vocations. God, our Father, you, you made each of us to receive our gifts in the body of Christ. We ask that you would inspire young people, whom you call to the priesthood and consecrated life, to courageously follow your will. Send workers into your great harvest, so that the gospel is preached, the poor are served with love, the suffering are comforted, and your people are strengthened by the sacraments. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Have a great weekend, everyone. You too, Father.